Welcome back to Mari Monday, where I answer your questions while playing a game. Today, I'm going to be playing more Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. And since this is my second episode, I was planning on answering a couple of questions, but this particular one caught my eye. So I decided to make this question its own dedicated video. And this question is from Lost and Disembodied, who is a Patreon member. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon! How long did it take you to get comfortable with streaming? Getting comfy with the nervousness, the idea of an audience, etc. overall. And um, this is such an interesting question to ask me because the answer is, um, I'm not. Ah, what a great answer, Mari. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to grab yourself some gamer stuff using so code Mari for 10% off and get yourself an, our new waifu cup. Don't worry, we can fix her. Oh wait, this video still isn't over. Oops. <laughs> Okay, no, no, for real. Okay, okay, well, technically, I'm not lying when I say that. Because I've come to realize that I'm not the best streamer at all. Like, listen, I've been a streamer on Twitch for maybe about, maybe eight years now. Oh, God, has it been eight years? It's been a long time. And I've always just struggled with streaming. And it has to do with the fact that it's live. And the thing about live streaming is that because it's live, it is so difficult to really like think on the go and multitask. Those are things that I struggle with because I have ADHD. And I always, <laughs> I always feel like whenever I bring up ADHD in these videos, like people just roll their eyes, but no, it actually does affect every single part of my life. And especially with streaming. The weird thing about my ADHD is that I have ADHD type C and it's important to this question because because I have combination type of ADHD, I can get either really, really hyper or I can get very inattentive and spacey. And guess which one's more popular for streaming? You guessed it, neither! No, I'm just kidding, no, but I have come to realize that on the days when I'm a lot more inattentive, um, I tend to lose retention for streaming this is both a youtube a twitch like whatever it doesn't matter i notice in general whenever i have one of these like spaced out episodes people always talk about how like quiet i am or they'll say like wow you just don't seem very interested in everything or like they get annoyed at how long it takes for me to articulate my thoughts because i'm thinking and spacing out and it's hard because everybody wants to see the more hyperactive like hyper mari but the reality is that i'm more mm, I'm kind of like, you ever like go to a beach and you just see a bunch of ocean waves and you just kind of see how calm and mellow the waves are, but then sometimes the waves can get really big and if you're like not careful, they can overtake you and then maybe possibly send you too far into the ocean. You can possibly drown and die, but you, you know, you know, like that's kind of how my uh, ADHD is. That's like a really great way for me to describe it because there are days where I am very hyper. I can articulate my thoughts really well and I kick ass and I just say everything right. I say everything funny, but that doesn't happen as often as you might think. Most of the time, I I get the other side and it sucks. I wish I could be the really like hyperactive like person all the time that I want to be on stream. And the really weird thing about live stream is that you have to maintain a certain type of persona at all times. Like if you're low energy, you need to maintain that all the time. If you're high energy, you need to maintain that all the time. I'm not saying that's like the right or wrong way to stream per se. This is just something I've observed over the years because I would give confusing signals to my audience. And because of that, they couldn't like figure out. Or well, I guess it's not even so much to figure out. It's like a trust thing, right? You know how like they tell you to always be consistent with your schedule? I think the same thing goes for like how what kind of persona you want to display on stream. You can't just be one thing one day and then something else another day. Even if we all have bad days and we all have mood swings and stuff, you still are there to entertain an audience. And well, what helped me get, I guess, at least comfortable with streaming is kind of accepting that this is who I am and that even though I might not grow nearly as well as other people, I have to be okay with that. It's not the easiest because even with like my YouTube videos, I know what videos get views. I know how to get views if I really wanted to. I know exactly what I could do to get more views on this channel. But yet here I am talking to you, playing a video game and answering a question that's more like off the cuff. It's not scripted at all. Like, it's very, very different, and I know this type of video doesn't get a lot of views, but I'm still doing it. And you might be thinking, like, well, why? Like, why would you, like, do all this kind of stuff if you're trying to build, like, an audience? And it's because when it comes to, like, thinking about the audience you're trying to attract, you have to really ask yourself, is this the audience I really want? Like I said, I know how I could get views on either a live stream or 
making videos. But I choose not to because that's not really the audience I want to attract. I know that there is an audience out there who like this kind of content, they just haven't found me yet. And what I need to do is do a better job at marketing myself and getting myself out there. But you have to be okay with like not being very big for a while and that helps you with getting over like the nervousness of streaming because I think a lot of people when they stream they they choke because it is live when you say something you can't take it back somebody can clip that take you out of context and like that's it at least with like a YouTube video you can just edit out the stuff you don't want and you know I know some people probably think oh Mari that's so you always want to make videos because you just want to edit stuff oh and it's like well yeah of course because Sometimes I'll be sitting here recording and I'll just sit there for like five minutes thinking about what I want to say because I have a difficult time articulating my thoughts some days, whereas other days I can really talk and talk and talk and talk. But for live streaming in particular, I do get nervous before streaming and it's mostly because I really, 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 really just don't want to disappoint people. It's so awkward when people say how much they love my videos and how much I inspire them and then they go to check out my live stream and they're like, oh God, oh God, what the hell? Oh God, she's like way different. This is like weird. And then they leave and it's like, wow, like that sucks. I probably just lost a, like a YouTube viewer because I'm a disappointment. Um, it's something I've had to kind of accept that live streaming isn't really for me. And I feel like for live streaming, at least you can do it it's okay if you want to do that if you like doing it i think a lot of people have this weird preconceived notion that you have to become a live streamer in order to grow as a content creator and that's not true i watch so many youtubers who have never streamed before and they're not old like they've been doing it for a while so they have the whole like oh well they've been around no like i've i've watched newer creators blow up on youtube who have never streamed and they have no desire to stream they literally just upload youtube videos and have a discord that's it so you really don't need to stream streaming is more like it's like a way to kind of encourage more uh, i want to say community oriented content so if you have like an already established audience, that is what live streaming is good for. You want to talk to like the people who love your videos and stuff or like your, your shorts or your memes or your artwork and the, you can say, hey, come watch me on a live stream. You want to come talk and get to know me. That is kind of like the whole point of a live streaming. I think that if your goal is to start out with live streaming, then you're going to really struggle because you have like these preconceived notions about how a live stream should be run. And um, honestly, I feel like if you're nervous with streaming, make a video first at least like with the video you can just kind of talk and talk and talk and then cut out the stuff that you don't want to be seen and then upload it that can get you a lot more comfortable just talking on camera then when you finally are comfortable talking on camera if you want to try to do a live stream then go ahead when it comes to like building an audience though oh man that's like um why you know it like why when i first started making content my idea of building an audience was more like Oh, I can have a community of people who actually want to listen to me talk about stuff that I'm interested in. And they are also interested in talking about that same thing. That was my idea of an audience. It's more like a community, very, very community focused. And this is a little bit different than how other people view what an audience is because some content creators view their audience like a fan base, like a fandom that they are cultivating. Like think about bands, celebrities, you know, movies, how you have this whole fan culture. That's how some people view their audience. I do not view people that way. If I did, you would see me making content way differently and I would not be making a video like this. <laughs> Flat out, like I would not be making a video like this. There are very different things that kind of come into play like a variable when you're making content online because depending on what your idea of an audience is, that can really change everything. Who is it that you're talking to? Literally, like everyone always talks about how I want to become a live streamer. I want to have all these people watching me and like telling me that they love me and that they give me money and that's all they think about and then they don't think about okay well what makes you worthy of being loved and given money to and when i think about that kind of stuff i notice that is very common with like streaming culture it's this whole like fandom ideology that's the kind of audience people want to build when they do live streaming at least that's what i have noticed i have noticed that people want a fan base they don't want a community they want a fan base they want people to fawn over them they want people to buy their merchandise they want people to idolize them um that's not what i want so that is 
probably why I'm not the most comfortable with streaming is because I know streaming can kind of cultivate that. Even though streaming is a good way to connect to your community, it still can cultivate that fandom-like uh, relationship. Now, of course, live streaming doesn't automatically mean that's what you're gonna get defaulted to. This is just what I've seen that's common. And because I know this, I get really anxious because I think like I'm a disappointment, like I said earlier. When people come in because they love my videos and they want to get to know me and then they realize, oh, your content is kind of like weird and like slow and like you take way too long to like do something. Um, then they leave. Or if I can't just like some people like they go into my live streams and they think that it's the perfect time for to get like some kind of weird consultation and they'll ask me like so many questions about VTubing, which I don't mind answering questions about VTubing, but it is kind of like weird when I'll be just playing a game and just doing something and people are like, hey, can you tell me like how I should run my YouTube channel? And I'm like, I don't know how you should run your YouTube channel. I'm like, I'm not, I don't know. And it, it's, and then if I don't answer them, they just leave. And then like, it's very, very weird. At least with like a YouTube video, I can just read people's comments and then get feedback that way. And be like, okay, people want to know how to do this and that. When you're like live, it makes me so, so anxious when people like act like that and then they leave. And I actively have to watch that. Like I actively have to watch somebody say something like that and then just leave because they're like, okay, well, you're useless. You didn't answer my question, bye. I'm like, wow, thanks for making me uh, feel so amazing. I'm such a great streamer, thank you for that. And that's something that I have a really hard time getting over. I think about how much people like dog on my live streams and it's something that I I wish I could be better at but I'm not and so I think for like other people who want to be a live streamer you're gonna have to be comfortable with people just insulting you like live even if they're not directly insulting you like some people will just directly insult you and troll you but sometimes people give these like secondhand not secondhand backhanded compliments where they think they're complimenting you but they're not it's gonna get under your skin and part of being a live streamer is that you can't react to it unless if you're the type of live streamer who likes to call people out in chat and that's like your thing because i don't know you're a bully i guess but if you do that then people are gonna be a little weird it outweigh that behavior because it's a little jarring you gotta realize why do you watch a live streamer you watch them because they're entertaining like if you watch the big live streamers, you will notice they rarely call out anybody in their chat. They rarely show emotion from the mean comments that they get. Like, take a look at what happened to Pokimane that one time with her cookie and how much, like, backlash she got because she let it get to her. You know, she has a whole dedicated team that deletes, like, negative comments on her YouTube stuff. And, like, she has a very strict moderation team, so that way she doesn't have to see a lot of that stuff. And yet that still got under her skin. And you can't do that. You have to have a certain type of resilience when it comes to live streaming. And I don't have that. I actually don't have that. I like having my YouTube videos because at least with negative comments, um, for the most part, I keep them up because I do think that I am like not prone to criticism. I think people can criticize me and that's fine. The comments that I don't really like are the ones where they're really petty and like nitpicky. Like I'll get like, and it's annoying when it's in the live stream too, right? I'll get like these really like nitpicky type of comments where people will just like make fun of how I pronounce things or they'll pick apart my sentence with like one word that I use incorrectly and then use that as an argument to devalue all of the advice and everything that I do. And at least on a YouTube comment, I can be like, okay, whatever, you're an idiot troll. Okay, like stay small fam, like stay small. But in a live stream, I can't really react to that. I have to like either ignore it, mute them or like ban them and stuff. And the thing is, there is just so much going on in a live stream. Like you have to maintain whatever activity is that you're doing. You have to keep an eye on chat to make sure people aren't trolling. If you have a moderation team, wonderful. I kind of, you know, I, I do have mods. They try their best. I love my mods, but they are very busy. Some of them are overseas and can't even make it to my streams half the time. And like, like I said, a lot of them are busy. I'm very thankful for the people who do help moderate my chat, but I know they can't all the time. And because of that, I have to also moderate my chat. So if you think about it, I'm doing four things at once. Playing either the game or activity, looking at chat and moderating it, trying to think about what it is that I want to say, and then also making sure my stream is not crashing or having any technical issues. If you're not good at multitasking, these are going to be difficult things for you. And um, I can multitask, but lately it's been getting a little bit harder for me. And I think it's because I have a lot on my mind. There's just 
a lot of things that I have to like think about and like deal with all the time and like that kind of eats away at like the time with what I can do with streaming. So going back to this whole how did I get comfortable with streaming? I, I don't think it's streaming that I am comfortable with. I think what I am comfortable with is making content in front of like a live audience versus like a video because I'm not a huge fan of streaming per se but I do like production. I like hosting events and doing things in the moment and being comfortable with that and being excited for that and seeing how other people get excited for that is how I've become more comfortable with live streaming. <laughs> Hopefully that could give you a little bit more insight on like how I go about this and like that could answer some of your questions. I hope I did a good job. Um, uh, ho hopefully. <laughs> well, uh, anyways, uh, look at the time. That's all I have for today. If you would like to submit a question for next week's video, then leave a comment down below. And if you're either a YouTube member or a Patreon, then check out the community tab or check out the Patreon to vote on the next game for me to try out. If you want me to keep playing this, then yeah, you know, we're gonna have a little poll as well as like send me more questions and stuff because I like doing this and hopefully you do too. Hmm. Thank you so much for watching everyone. And remember, everything reminds you of something. Bye.